ask you today, if you will, please turn in your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. There's a verse, really two verses here that I would like to read. I know that you know this verse, or both these verses, by heart. And yet, Peter said, as he wrote to the saints of God, to the elect of God, he said it was needful for him to remind them of various things and put them in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. He said he still would write them again and tell them the things that they already knew just to remind them. And I feel led of the Lord that we look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. The Word of God says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. It says to first thing, the very first thing he says is be sober, be of a sound mind, be serious minded. Let your mind think about the things that it needs to be thinking about. Be sober Then he says, be vigilant. That word vigilant means to be watchful, means to be on the lookout. If there was was an escaped convict today in Ware County, if there were some of the prisoners, if a murderer had escaped from the state prison, there would be an all points bulletin for everybody to be on the lookout. And I expect, especially if you lived in that area, I expect you would be watching carefully for that escaped convict. Well, there's something more serious than an escaped convict that is out, and that is the devil, and he is described here as a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. I want us to know and understand that even though we have been redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, and we will be in the eternal heaven when this world is over, I want you to know that the devil can destroy your life while you live here in this world. The devil can devour you, and the way that you can keep that from happening is by you being sober and being vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Brethren, there are particular children of God, there are particular sheep, there are particular lambs that he is able to devour. I believe also that if we do the things that God tells us to do in his word, I believe that the devil cannot devour us if we're following what Jesus tells us to do. So it's imperative, it's important that if you and your family do not want to be destroyed or devoured or killed by the devil, if you don't want that to happen, it's important that you be sober and be vigilant, be on the lookout, because he is out there. God's very plain in his word. He is walking about seeking whom he may devour. He can devour me and he can devour you. doesn't matter how long you have walked with God. If you are not sober and vigilant every day, doesn't matter how many times in the past you have been sober and vigilant. On one day, if you are not careful, the devil will destroy your life in one day. Think about David. The Bible describes David as a man after God's own heart. And departed not from anything that God commanded him, save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. And brethren, in one day, when David was not where he was supposed to be, when it was time that the kings went to battle, in one day, in one night, David began to get up on the rooftop of his house and he began to look out when he couldn't sleep that night and he saw Bathsheba in one day. He did something that night, and then later with the husband of Uriah the Hittite, he had him killed. In one day, in one night, David did things that brought such trouble in his life that the sword 
never departed from his house. He suffered the rest of his life. That can happen to you and to me. The devil is walking about, has been from the beginning. Go all the way back to the Garden of Eden. He was there, the devil was there in the Garden of Eden. And God told, God told Adam, he says that they could eat of every tree in the, in the garden except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And he said, in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the devil said, in Genesis chapter 3, the very next chapter, and the devil said, ye shall not surely die. He inserted the word not. He denied what God said. He was calling God a liar. I'll tell you who the liar is. It's the devil. And the devil lied to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And he lied to them. And he has been lying all through the ages. And he, has, he was a lion. He was a roaring lion there. Seeking whom he may devour. He devoured. He destroyed. He killed. He had Adam and Eve driven out of the Garden of Eden. They lost their paradise. They lost the joys of having fellowship with God. Because they were not vigilant and sober and they yielded to the temptation of the devil. And that's what, can hap that's what can happen to me and to you. Be sober, be vigilant. Now, who wrote these words right here that we're reading from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8? Who wrote those words? Who, whose pen wrote down those words? Who's Peter. Now, I know that this is the inspired word of God. I understand that. The brethren, God chose the people that wrote the particular words that are in the Word of God. And Peter knew all about this roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may, do, whom he may devour. Peter knew all about it. Well, how did Peter know, such, know so much about this? Brother, you need to know about God, but you also need to know about the devil. Jesus. You need to know all about Jesus. You need to know all about God. But you need to know the devil is real. You need to know that he's seeking you. And he will destroy you or your children or your family if you do not be sober. Be sober. Be vigilant. Cause your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Peter knew all about that, didn't he? Back up in your Bibles to Luke, just a moment, looking, well, let's stop in John. I want to, I want to notice a couple of things about the devil in John, then we'll go to, to Luke and look at the particular experience that, that uh, Peter had. But I want you to stop in John chapter 8. I want you to be sure that you understand what the devil is. The devil, I remember when I was a child, we had pictures of the devil. We had cartoons that would have the devil on one shoulder and or have a picture of the devil on one shoulder and a little angel on the other shoulder. Any of you ever see those cartoons that had the devil on one side? And, and, and it's a lot like that. There's a lot of similarities there because the Lord will guide you and lead you and direct you and you can feel the leadership of the Spirit of God and you can feel God leading you and directing you. The Bible says that the people of God, as many as are led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. I need to listen to the Lord. I need to listen to the angel of the Lord. But I also need to know there is a devil. Difference is that the devil does not have a long tail and a pitchfork and horns on his head. The devil never looks dangerous. And the things the devil wants you to do do not look dangerous. They all look very pleasant. The devil is deceitful. He's a liar. That's the way he destroys you. That's the way he destroys the people of God is because he is so slick and smart and smooth in all the ways he approaches the people of God. Rather than if he came to you with a pitchfork and a, and a pointed tail and, a, and horns on his head, how many of you would run when you saw him? And I'd head the other way. I don't want to see something looking like that. But he doesn't look like that. John chapter 8. Listen to, about, listen to what God, listen to what Jesus says about the devil. John chapter 8, verse 44. John 8, verse 44. Jesus describes the devil. He says, ye are of, he speaks to these people 
He says, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Is the devil a murderer? Is he a murderer? What did he tell Adam and Eve? From the beginning goes all the way back. You know what Jesus is talking about right here when he says, he was a murderer from the beginning. Going all the way back to the Garden of Eden. He was a murderer from the beginning. The scripture says, and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. Now that's about as bad as you can get when there is no truth in a person. There is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. Will the devil lie to you? Will the devil tell you? Do you think the devil will lie to you? He will lie to you. That's all he can do is lie to you. Now he'll sometimes speak half truths, but it's still a lie. The devil's a liar and he's a murderer. That's the way Jesus describes him as a murderer. He was a murderer from the beginning. He's still a murderer today. And he'll be a murderer as long as this world continues. The devil will be ruling his evil kingdom. Go with me to John chapter 10. Listen again as Jesus describes the devil in John chapter 10 verse 10. He tells us all about him. He says in John 10 verse 10, the thief. You know who the thief is he's talking about here? The devil. The thief cometh not but, to, but for to steal and to kill and destroy. Why is the devil here? What's he coming to do? Why is he coming to your life? One purpose. The only purpose he has is to steal. You know what he'll steal from you? Name something the devil can steal from you. Joy. Joy peace. What else? Your life. your life, yes. He's come to steal. He's come to steal your peace and your joy and your life. He's come to steal from you. He's come to steal your children. I want to tell every parent here, you need to know and understand, the devil will get your children if you're not sober and vigilant. You have a great responsibility with those children. You have a great responsibility with those grandchildren. If you're not careful, the devil will have them. I don't know of anything that will hurt a parent any more than the devil getting your children and your grandchildren. He's come to steal. That's just what Jesus says. He came to steal and to kill and to destroy. Well, now what does Peter say in 1 Peter 5 8? He says, Be sober. Be vigilant. Look out. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may. The word there is devour. We could also, from the words of Jesus, say it. He's come to, he's a roaring lion, come to not only devour, he's come to steal and to kill and to destroy. He's come to murder you and your family. He's come to murder this church. It's the desire of the devil to destroy this church. It has always been the, de the desire of the devil every time there's ever been a true church of Jesus Christ. It has always been his intent and desire and focus and attention to destroy that church. And when there is a nation that stands on the principles of God's holy word and is established in the truth of God's word, it is the devil's intent and purpose to destroy that nation. And he has been successful in our nation. In spite of the fact that we were a godly nation, in spite of the fact that the Supreme Court said on one occasion, this is a Christian nation, we're no longer a Christian nation. We're no longer a godly nation. But we're a nation now that has laws that completely contradict the word of God and the ways of God. You know how that came about? How did that happen? Because we were not sober and we were not vigilant. Yes. Because we were not sober and vigilant. Our nation has been destroyed. And the judgment is coming. And your family needs to be sober and vigilant. And you need to be sober and vigilant. Because the devil is still walking about seeking whom he may devour. 
Now, let's think about what he did with Peter. Back up to Luke 22. See, Peter wrote those words over there in 1 Peter 5, 8. He didn't only write them because he was inspired of God to write them. He wrote them down because he had lived it. He had, he had experienced it. The devil had gotten hold of him. One of the prophets, I think it's Isaiah, speaks about Israel. That they were like a lamb that was being devoured by a lion. And all that was sticking out of the lion's mouth was a leg. That's all that was left. He had the rest of the, of the lamb inside of him, just the leg sticking out. And God intervened and pulled the lamb out of the lion's mouth. I've been just that close. Probably most of you have been just that close to being totally devoured, consumed, killed, destroyed. And then God has pulled us out. Praise God is right. Amazing grace. And if he's pulled me out of the mouth of the lion... And then I go right back and I flirt with that lion again. I'm telling you, brethren, God doesn't keep coming and snatching you out of the paw of the lion and the bear. You keep tempting the devil. You keep going back to the devil. You keep following his ways. You stop being sober and vigilant and your life will be destroyed. Luke 22. Here's Jesus now talking to Peter. And I want you to listen to what he tells him. This is... Uh, Luke chapter 22, I want to begin with verse 31. Luke 22, verse 31, the word of God says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, now who is Simon? Peter. Simon, Peter. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. <laughs> That's the same thing as grinding you to power, powder. How many of you remember, Brother David does, Brother Ken does, how many of you remember a sifter? How many of you remember pouring the the uh, flour in that sifter and sitting there and turning that crank to sift you as wheat. Everybody remember what we're talking about? Some of you don't, but that's why we used to sift wheat. Grind it. Sift it. You remember that? And Jesus uses that illustration. He says, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Grind you to powder. He's no different today than he was then and in the beginning of the world. Satan has not changed. And he told Peter, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. And then he says in verse 32, But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, was he going to yield to temptation? Was Peter going to yield to temptation? Yes, he was. That's the reason he says, but I'm praying for you and I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. But I have prayed for you that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, rather than Peter had already been born again, he had already been a disciple of Jesus, but he got almost devoured by the devil. And he did grind him to powder. And he says, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. You know what he did in 1 Peter 5, 8? He strengthened me. He told me all about the devil. He says, I've already been there. Now, I know a lot of people are too smart to listen to any kind of instruction a lot of people not interested in God's word. Not interested in the experiences of old people. I tell you, you need to listen to Brother David and Brother Ken and some of these old people. You need to pay attention to them. You need to pay attention to Peter. You need to pay attention to Jesus. They'd been there. Peter had been there. He knew all about Satan devouring, chewing on him, grinding him to powder. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren... Verse 33, and he said unto him, this is Peter talking back to Jesus now. He said, Lord, I'm ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. On another occasion, the word of God describes it. He said, I'll never leave you for, nor forsake you. And he said, though all the other apostles and all your other disciples leave you, I'll be faithful to you, Jesus. You know what he did? Peter was too... I'm going to list about five things. I think it's beautiful, and I, I didn't see this so clearly as last night and yesterday and this past week in studying, but there's about five things it tells us about Peter that led to him getting chewed up. 
by the devil. First one is he boasted too much. Do you hear him boasting? Everybody hear him boasting? You read it here and you go read it in the other accounts of what happened right here. Peter was a boasting man. Oh, everybody else will forsake you, but I won't. I'm better than anybody else. I won't forsake you, Lord. Have you ever felt that way? I have. I thought, Lord, I don't care if the rest of the world denies you. I don't care what way they go. I'll never forsake you. Fasten your seatbelt. You're probably fixing to forsake him right then. Be not high-minded, but fear. Because this devil will sneak right up behind you when you're not paying attention. He's very quiet, very subtle. He boasted too much. Peter said in verse 33, and he said unto him, Lord, I'm ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, Jesus said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. How did Peter think? What did Peter think about those words? <laughs> Poor old Jesus. He doesn't understand how. He doesn't know how strong I am. He doesn't know how faithful I am. He doesn't know how much I love him. I'm not going to do that. Watch what happens. Come down. Turn. Come down to verse uh, 40. <clears throat> verse 40. The word of God says. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. This is when Jesus is going into the Garden of Gethsemane. He's going to pray. And he says to his disciples, what did he tell his disciples to do? Pray that ye enter not into temptation. Do you know what you're going to do if you're sober and you're vigilant? You're going to be, and I know what you might, you know what you will be doing if you're sober and you're vigilant? You know what you will be doing? It's a four letter word. What is it? Pray, pray, pray. If you want to keep the devil from destroying your life, you better be praying. Praying. Uh, that movie we saw yesterday morning, The War Room. You know what the whole focus of that was about? You know what it was all about? It was about prayer. Praying. I think it's amazing how God's people by the grace of God and by praying. It's amazing the changes that can take place in your life and mine and the others that we pray for. When we pray, when we enter into the closet and we pray fervently and we pray diligently, we need to pray that God will not let that lion destroy those that we love, that he will not let that lion destroy us, that God will help us to help each other and pray one for another. We need to have a prayer closet we need to fight a battle against the devil. We have a battle to fight. There's a battle Jesus has already won. He won a battle at Calvary 2,000 years ago. He won a battle over the devil. And I am, you are, and all of God's children are redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. Because Jesus won the battle. Isaiah chapter 40, I believe, says, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem. Tell her that her warfare is accomplished. She hath received double for all her sins. Oh, brethren, our warfare eternally has been accomplished. But he tells us you still have a battle to fight in your lives every day. Otherwise, the devil will, what's the word? He will what? Devour. Give me another one. Kill, destroy, steal, murder. He'll kill you. Now, what did Jesus tell him to do? Did he know the devil was right there? What did he tell him to do? Pray, pray, pray. You know what they did? Now he went on further than they did. Now Peter, James, and John went a little further than the rest of the disciples. But, and then Jesus went on further than they did. And he left and he prayed. And Jesus prayed and he came back. And what did he find his disciples doing? What was Peter doing? Sound asleep. Sound asleep. Was he being sober? Was he being vigilant? Sound asleep. Was he praying? No. He boasted too much. You see that on that previous page? And now right here it says in my Bible's previous page, right here he's praying too little. Do you know the way that the devil can destroy you is if you are boasting too much or you're praying too little? Either one. 
devil will get you. He will get you. He'll get your family. He'll get your children. He prayed too little. Come down to verse 50. Verse 50. The word of God says, this is how the soldiers come down. One of them, it doesn't tell us who it is right here. <laughs> Luke was real kind not to call him by name, but Matthew calls him by name. You go and read Matthew's account. Matthew said, Peter. Peter pulled out his sword and struck off the ear of Malchus. You remember that? Who did that? Peter. He acted too quickly, didn't he? Now, but think about this. This is just amazing to me. He got step after step. First thing is, he boasted too much. Second thing is, he prayed too little. And now, this tells us and shows us, he jumped too quickly. Have you ever moved too quickly? Well, he pulled out a sword. I, if I'd have been there, I'd have said, Good job, Peter. Good job. I'll tell you, I'd have been, I'd have been glad somebody stood up for Jesus like that. Do you understand? You know what Jesus did? He rebuked him. You know why? Because though it looked wonderful that he was def defending Jesus, it wasn't what Jesus would have him to do. And if he had been praying, he would have understood what Jesus was going to have to do. But he didn't pray, so he didn't understand. So he jumped to a conclusion, and he did something he shouldn't have done. And Jesus rebuked him. And then Jesus took that ear and put it back on and touched him and healed the ear. Oh, me. Look at the love of Jesus. Look at the mistake of Peter. You know what Peter's doing? In, uh, <laughs> that When he was boasting too much, the lion had him by what? What did the lion have him by right then? Just name any part of the body. It doesn't matter. He had him by what part of the body? Okay, he had him by the head. Oh, yeah, man. Big head. <laughs> Boy, the love, devil loves a big head. He has got you. He had him by the head. And then he, then he prayed too little. He had some more of the body inside. And then he acted too quickly and was angry. And he did something God wouldn't have him to do. And he was consumed a little more by the roaring lion. And come down to verse uh, 54. And then they took him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter... Peter followed afar off, didn't he? You know what will happen when you get far away from Jesus? He's going to swallow you even more. He, he followed him afar. Did you know that's the way to get killed by the devil is you don't stay close to Jesus. He followed afar off. The next verse says, and when they had kindled... And this is the soldiers, the evil ones. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Sat down with the enemy. He sat down with those soldiers who were taking Jesus to be crucified. How could Peter do such a thing? He sat down with the enemy. That's what you'll do when you get too far from Jesus. You'll sit down with the enemy. And, and I don't have time to read the rest of this, but you know what he did? A woman came and said, a maid said, you're one of Jesus' disciples. Oh, I don't know him. No, I, first denial, second denial, third denial. He denied Christ. He cursed and denied he knew Jesus. And then what happened? The cock crew. And Peter was ashamed. He remembered what Jesus told him and he remembered what he had said. He remembered, I said, I'll never leave you. I'll be faithful to death. And he saw he was a coward rather than a good soldier. You know what will lead you to be a coward? It's when you don't stay close to Jesus. It's when you boast too much, when you pray too little. It's when you sit down with the enemy. You'll be devoured. I think it's beautiful that Peter wrote down. Be sober. Be vigilant. He knew from experience what will happen if you're not sober and vigilant. He knew the devil will get you. Go with me to Luke chapter 8 very quickly. This some, oh, I wish I, I wish I could preach the rest of my life. Just I'm talking about non-stop. I'm not talking about just as long as I'm talking about every day, all day long, all night. I wish I could just, I wish I could get to, the, I don't think I've ever gotten to the end of a sermon. 
I don't think I've ever preached something and finished. I wish you could see all the notes. I wish you could see all I've seen in studying this. I remember Brother McKinley Wright, he always used to say, often when he would say, when he would finish preaching, he'd say, Oh, I wish I could have preached it as it is. I wish I could have preached it as pretty as it is. I wish I could have gotten it across what the beauty is in God's Word. Oh, it's important. God's Word's important. It'll save you. We'll save you from eternal hell. Jesus did that. But it'll save you from a lot of hell here on this earth. It'll save you to a lot of joys in the kingdom of heaven. Luke chapter 8. I want you to watch what the devil does here. Luke chapter 8 verses 11 and 12. This is the parable of the sower. Word of God says now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. You know what I'm up here trying to do? I'm sowing what? What am I sowing? Seed. I'm sowing the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Have you, how many of you have heard the word of God today? Heard. They that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts. I want you to remember that. He took the word out of their hearts. You know why you can't remember the word of God on Monday? It's not this that you're forgetful. That's not it at all. You know why you can't think about you know why on Monday if I make a call to every member of the church that's here today and say, tell me what I preached about tomorrow or yesterday. Tomorrow. Tell me what I preached about yesterday. You know, probably half the people will say, of course, now you've got a warning. You know what I'm going to do. But, but if you didn't know, and Thursday I said, what did I preach about last Sunday morning? Oh, yes, it, I enjoyed it. It was so good. It, it was about God and about how good God is and such general things. That's why I used to bluff whenever teachers would ask me questions. I'd oh, just generalize all I could and I'd say, you didn't read it at all, did you? Sometimes, sometimes we hear the word and, and we rejoice while we hear the word. But there's something that happens that keeps that seed from bringing forth fruit in our lives. What is it that happens that keeps the word that you're hearing from bringing forth fruit in your life? Only one thing that happens. Tell me what it is. The devil takes the word out of your heart. Remember, oh, by the way, I didn't see this. I got chill bumps all over me. I'm going to tell you something he puts in your heart, okay? <laughs> he takes the word out of your heart. Now watch this. Turn to John chapter 13. Who was the worst of the apostles? Who was the, I mean, who's the one of the apostles? And I'm not talking about Peter right now. I'm talking about somebody that, probably worse than Peter. Now, Peter was bad. Jesus told Peter, get behind, get me behind me, Satan. He called him Satan, but... He said, one of you is a devil, and, and uh, he was talking about whom right there? Who was the, probably the worst apostle there was? Who sold him for 30 pieces of silver? Judas. Judas. Watch this now, John 13, verse 2. See, you know what Judas was not full of? You know what was not in Judas's heart? What was not in Judas's heart? Tell me. The Word of God was not in his heart. The Word was not in his heart. Why wasn't the Word? He's walking around with the Word. He's hearing Jesus. He's hearing the living Word. Speaking the spoken Word. And yet the Word wasn't in his heart. And when the Word's not in your heart, here's what the devil will put in your heart. The devil takes the Word out of your heart. What? John 13 verse 2. John 13 verse 2. The Word of God says in supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart the devil did what he put into the heart of Judas Iscariot Simon's son to betray him he put it in his heart you know where all these bad ideas come from the devil put something in his heart didn't he the devil put something in his head and put something in his heart. Has the devil ever put anything in your heart? Has the devil ever put anything in your head? The only way to keep that from happening is to keep your heart full of the Word of God. Keep your head full of the Word of God. Quote the Scripture. Think about the Word of God. When the devil came to Jesus, he just he pulled out that sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. 
And the devil said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be turned into bread. Jesus pulled out that sword and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Man shall what? Not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And he just tempted and tempted. And every time, what did Jesus quote? What did he use? He used the word. If you are full of the word and the devil attacks you, you can pull out that sword of the Spirit and you'll win that battle. And the Bible tells us after Jesus had finished those temptations, the Bible tells us, and the devil departed for a season. <laughs> He's going to come back. But every time you win a battle with the devil, he'll eventually flee from you. In fact, the scripture says in James chapter 4, he says in verse 7, he says, Resist the devil. Can you resist the devil? Can you resist the devil? Do you ever have to resist the devil? Oh yeah, all the time. We all the time. We have to resist the devil every day. Resist the devil. How can you resist the devil? The devil's strong. Do you know the devil's stronger than you are? Anybody in this building. All of us combined, the devil is stronger than all of us combined. But the scripture says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So, how can you resist the devil? Well, Jesus is my only hope. It's not in my strength, it's not in my power. It's not because of my last name, it's not because I'm a preacher. My only hope to resist the devil, my only hope to flee from the devil, my only hope to trample Satan under my feet is through the power of Jesus Christ to call on the name of the Lord, to say, Jesus, 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 help me, Lord, because a lion is after me. And I need Jesus. I need Jesus every day. Doesn't matter how far along you go on life's journey. It doesn't matter how many battles you've won. You need Jesus as long as you live. Otherwise, he'll devour you. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, he's your adversary. He's your enemy. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But against principalities and powers. We wrestle against the devil. He's our enemy. He's our adversary. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 says, We are not ignorant of his devices. Do you know the devices of the devil? Do you know some of the devices of the devil? Just very quickly in closing. Name a device of the devil. Any device he ever uses. Pride. What else? Deception. Be more specific. Steal. Steal. Kill, destroy. We do those kinds of things. What else? Defiant. Say it again. Defiant. defiant. Yes, we get defiant, belligerent. Doubt. Say it again. Doubt. Doubt. Unbelief. Unbelief. That sums it all up. What? Despair. Despair. Get weak, weary, tired, faint. What else? What does he use? What are the devices he uses? Say it again. Temptation. Temptation. Say it again. Lies. Lies. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. And the pride of life. All sin summed up in that scripture. First, Tim, first John 2.15. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. How many, how many devices does he have? Oh, he's got an arsenal of them. But there's a a weapon you can use against every device the devil has. Don't be ignorant of his devices. And when he pulls one of them out, don't yield. May God help us to not be destroyed is my prayer for Christ's sake.